Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to write the inequality or write the compound inequality from a graph. Now, basically, when we're looking at, um, looking at inequalities like this, we, we see that we have two things going on. It's just not one you know, dot here and an arrow going one way where we can quickly just kind of write what the inequality is. Here we have compound inequalities. Now, remember, compound inequalities are going to deal with the conjunction either and or or. And obviously, when we have inequalities here, you can see that my values that are true is going to be my closed points as well as all the shading here. So those points have to be greater than negative 3 and less than 1. Okay. So there's two different ways to kind of write an and inequality. We can write it separately, or we can also write it as one, one single statement. So I'm going to first write it, them separately and then write them together. So um, first of all, we notice that our points are closed. So remember, that's going to be dealing with greater than or equal to or less than or equal to it. So it's very important to understand when you have closed or open points. So I know my values, and these values are going to represent x. Okay. So I know x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. All right. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. And because it's not just going to go, that would, be, that would include 2, 3, 4, and so on. And the points also have to be greater than or equal to, or um, less than or equal to 1. So x has to be less than or equal to negative 1. Because remember, and it has to be true for both. So if they're greater than negative 3 and they're less than 1, they're only going to fit in between here. Now, this is as the, this is as the statement um, written with the conjunction and. I can also write this as a compound inequality, stating that between negative 3 and 1, I have x, meaning x is greater than or equal to negative 3, and it's less than or equal to 1. 1, just like that. OK, now in this example here, we have a closed and we have an open point. All right. Now they're also showing up in different, they're also going in opposite directions. What that signals to me is that it's going to be an or conjunction. Instead of an and, it's going to be an or because you can have points that are less than 0. Or you can have points that are greater than 2. And if you pick a point that's less than 0, less than or equal to 0, or greater than 2, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make your inequality true. So what I would say is x is less than or equal to 0, or x is greater than 2. Now again, the reason why it's or not and is because and, it has to be true for both of them. You can see here my x is true for it's greater than negative 3 and it's less than negative 1, whereas here, x is less than 0, like negative 1, that's less, than, that's less than or equal to 0, but that is not greater than or equal to 2. So that's right, or comes in place because and, they both have to be true, or it can be one or the other, or actually both, um, which I don't have any examples here in this one. Over here, we have another or statement. However, now we have two open points. So again, we just go ahead and write them separately. So I can say um, x has to be less than negative 2 or x is greater than 4. OK? So you can, look, you can determine them. I always just, I remember I've used the symbol so often that I know what less than, know what greater than, but I know a lot of students get those kind of confused. So make sure you practice with them what each symbol absolutely represents. Um, and you know, always write the x, um, try to write the x in front, uh, in front of your variable. So it's x greater than 4. And I like to say them out loud, too. That always helps me out. A lot of times when I'm trying to determine if I did it right or correct, I say it out loud, and that helps me determine. The last one here is, again, I have another and statement. You can see they're going towards each other, or they're intersecting. So again, what I, um, here, well, let's just go and look at it. So you can see, rather than writing it separately like I did over here, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but rather than writing it separately, I'm just going to write it as, the comp, as, um, as one single inequality. So another way to look at that is to kind of say, all right, what is kind of the left barrier? How far is this going over to the left? Well, that's negative 3. How far is it going over to the right? Well, that's going to be 9. OK, all the values that make that inequality true are in between, which is x, which can represent any number. Not just 0. It could be 1. It could be 2. It could be 3. It could be 1.5. It could be 1.67, so forth. Therefore, all these, my x values have to be greater than negative 3, because that's open. But they have to be less than or equal to, because that's closed, 9. So they have to be greater than negative 3, but less than or equal to 9. And that's how you can just write it as one single inequality. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write a compound inequality from a graph. Thanks.